Welcome to our YouTube channel, Elevate. Last year we came out with the modified Cirrus video and it was of this 2010 Cirrus SR22T, all new paint job, new interior, avionics work, engine work. We love the results. Since then, in that last year, we've done some additional upgrades, so we wanted to fill you in on those upgrades. First of all is the Behringer dual caliper brake system. I would say over the last eight months or so that we've flown with these brakes, we've got nothing but good things to say about them. I would highly recommend them. They are a better performer than the OEM single caliper Behringer brakes. They weigh about five pounds more. I'd say it's worth it. So if you have a generation three, two, or one, highly recommend the upgrade. If you've got a generation five, six, or seven, you already have single caliper Behringers. If you want better performance, go with the dual calipers. Don't recommend buying them directly from Cirrus. The pricing is pretty crazy. I'll put a link in the description to buying them direct. I bought them from Billy, directly from Behringer. He was phenomenal, he was very knowledgeable. So I'll put his contact in the description of the video. After we installed the dual caliper Behringers, we upgraded our wheel pants to the access doors. So the generation five, six, and seven already have these access doors, but those doors, correct me if I'm wrong, leave a comment if this is wrong, but I believe that all OEM access doors have a Phillips screwdriver head in order to get in. So you need a tool. These are really nice. These are the OEM Cirrus upgraded wheel pants and they have the push button doors. So you just push that in, no tools required, and you can easily access your valve stem versus the previous generation. So the generation one, two, and three had all different wheel pants. Generation one to two to three were all slightly different. So this is actually the, like the fourth generation wheel pant with the upgraded door. They're fantastic. So it makes filling up your air pressure so much easier instead of trying to align to a little circle that used to be here on the one, two, and three. Another upgrade is the four blade prop. So this is the MT composite four blade prop. Um, we did have Midwest Aircraft refinishing, paint the prop tips Corso red in order to coordinate with the rest of the plane. From the factory, from MT, this prop comes with white prop tips. And that looks great on most planes. On this one, we thought that the Corso red looked a little bit better. Then MT was kind enough to send us uh, matching red stickers to the Corsa Red. These come from MT green, and it just didn't work with the, uh, with the color scheme of the airplane. This prop has been, in, in our opinion, nothing but phenomenal. Uh, we don't see a single downside to this prop. Your ground clearance is increased by an inch. The sound is better in our opinion. It sounds nicer uh, in the cockpit, a little bit smoother and a little bit higher pitch. And your decibel reading is way less. We came out with a full prop video you can find on our channel dedicated to comparing this prop against the Hartzell composite uh, three blade prop. And we did as scientific of tests as possible in that comparison, same exact airplane, same exact weight in the airplane, same temperature, same time of year, same fuel capacity, same pilot, same co-pilot. So we tried to make it as accurate as possible and did everything in a timed fashion. And this prop outperformed the three blade in every single category. So I, I have nothing but phenomenal things to say about the performance and so far the communication and the backing of MT as a company. I'll include this in the link with a, uh, I'll probably put the email address in there too of who I bought this from um, at, uh, at MT. Another thing that we had done was the rudder pedals are painted. If you're having your interior refinished anyways, they're gonna have it all torn apart so you could consider your rudder pedals being uh, painted. They don't come looking great from the factory so we, when we took this back up to uh, Ross at Midwest uh, Aircraft Refinishing to paint the prop tips, he also took apart our rudder pedals for us and painted them to match the piping throughout the airplane. And so it gives it just a slightly more refined feel. 
And lastly, the Starlink integration. We do have a dedicated Starlink video that we came out with maybe four or five months ago. In that one, I actually physically show you how to modify some of the generations to fit the top OEM bracket. And it's a legal modification because it's all OEM parts and it doesn't mess at all with the firewall or the seatbelt brackets. So that's something that an owner can do because it's a simple bolt and then unbolt. Um, so I show you that in one video and then I, we're gonna come out with another video any day now that shows uh, Starlink, the connections that we're using, so the power supplies, et cetera, um, versus a battery. We strongly don't recommend a battery versus having it hardwired. So check out those other videos if you're interested in Starlink. We absolutely love it. It's to the point now where it's like, we, can't, we feel like we can't fly without it and we think that you're gonna feel the same. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to our channel. If you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment, tell us what you like about what we did, what you don't like about what we did and what you would do on your own plane. I'd love to hear that feedback. We'll see you on the next one. Lene and I started flying three and a half years ago, and a major like issue was trying to find sunglasses that worked under our headsets without creating too much pressure here, without reducing the ANR effect. Because when you put your sunglasses on, if it pulls your pad out, you can instantly hear a lot of your surroundings. And then also seeing the screens. So we tried like three or four different pairs. Yeah, even like the thin ones, like the ray had really right. thin frame right here. It would still hurt your head. It would like push on your head here, and then you have this pushing on your head here. So and when you're flying, you almost all the time need sunglasses. Yeah. That was like a sticking point, was we could not find glasses. And we were watching something, I think on YouTube, and we saw Flying Eyes. Flying Eyes Optics is a company that makes dedicated sunglasses for motorcycle helmets, and especially aviation. And I bought a pair then about two and a half years ago. I was like, these are awesome. They are hands down the best sunglasses that I've ever worn. Love them both in the cockpit and out of the cockpit. And now they're a sponsor of the channel. You can use our coupon code, you can save 10%. So I'll put the coupon code on the bottom here. You can use the link in the description. You'll save 10%. These are the Kestrels. You can spec out your frame color. You can spec out your lens color. You can get them in uh, reading glasses. You can get them in prescription. Those are called Noctura. the Nocturas. I also have the Ospreys. Because they're such lightweight glasses, they mold to your head. So your, your headset does not become painful. We've worn these for about a five-hour trip. You don't feel anything. Our previous sunglasses, I had to always wear yeah. like this yeah. <laughs> in order to not have the A&R and not have the pain. Super lightweight. I Sometimes I drop them. They never get damaged. They like are super indestructible and they're extremely flexible. If you sit on them, nothing's going to happen, uh, but high quality. Love these things. Try them out. Now back to our other flight.